boys and girls, it's Storyteller Tammany Day, yay! And it's spring break, at least for our kids. It's spring break here because our spring break was actually pushed forward. So we won't be having our spring break until next week, but it actually technically starts tomorrow after school is finished. So we're excited about that. All right, so today we're gonna get right into our story. We're gonna talk about the three little pigs and it's not what you think and maybe actually you've seen it or have actually read it, but it's not what you think. This one is the true tale. So, all right, I'll just get into it. The true story of the three little pigs. The wolf is trying to convince everybody that he's actually good. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story. Because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. This is the wolf talking. Not me. I'm the wolf. Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Hmm, maybe it's because of our diet. It's not our fault that wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. All right, so there he is explaining himself and it looks like he's wearing prison outfit. And then he's showing a burger with all the different animals in it. <laughs> I mean, he's probably right. If my well, hamburgers are cute sometimes. Anyway, besides the point. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. Okay. So these are... <laughs> He wrote it out on a chalkboard. It's making it official. He's teaching us. This is the real story. Okay, so there. Get right into the story. Find out what happens. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold and I ran out of sugar. Okay, so he's baking a birthday cake. And if you can see, there's rabbit in the birthday cake for his wolf granny. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig and he wasn't too bright either. He had his whole house built of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So there's the house of straw. He's walking this path to get some sugar. He's even got the cup in his hand. He's kind of playfully throwing it back and forth in the air. So of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house. So I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. And I sneezed a great sneeze. Wow, that's ginormous. And look, there's a little pig. Oh boy, what's gonna happen? And you know what? That whole darn house full of straw fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying in there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, 
but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Okay, so there's the house of sticks. And there's the pig telling the wolf to go away. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like this brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open, so I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. He looks awfully stuffed. And then there's the house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? Do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Ooh. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and he wouldn't give me one little cup for my dear, sweet, old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake. When I felt my cold coming on, I huffed. And I snuffed, and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your granny can sit on a pen. Oh my, those aren't very kind words. Now I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. Yes, he was. Look at this. Got reporters and cops, or maybe, yeah, it's reporters. Yep. Making an amazing, crazy mess. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy didn't going to borrow a cup of sugar wasn't exactly very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. Well, there's the newspaper about the big bad wolf. Maybe you can even read it if you want. Nope. It's all gibber, gibber, gibberish. And there's him crumpling up the newspaper, frustrated because he didn't do it. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar? Oh. <laughs> Boys and girls, I like this book. I like it because it makes you think about someone else's side of a story, right? If I, if I give someone else the benefit of the doubt, meaning I think about how they might be feeling or what they might be going through, then it helps, right? So I think it's a good idea. I don't know. It's probably not true. Of course, a lot of the fairy tales aren't true. So, but there you go. Boys and girls, if you're new, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more stories. And if you wanna make sure you never miss a story again, hit the little bell. You'll get a notification every time. Oh, this is so exciting. I look forward to this so much. Bye-bye.